podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. And welcome to the eighth episode of Big Decisions for Anfield Index. So I'm your host, ladies and gents, Dave Davis, coming to you from a sunny but freaking cold Edinburgh today. The sun is out, but it is not holiday temperatures by any means. Let's just put it that way. Maybe the same for you, wherever you are, we'd have to see. But wherever you are, we are around, well, just over... 24 hours before most will be building their Carabao Cup final build-up. A eh? Three o'clock Sunday at Wembley, Liverpool versus Chelsea. And the first thing probably on your big decisions, docket is excitement. How excited are you about a Carabao Cup final? That's probably a big decision you have to make. For some, it will be straightforward. Like for me, I'll be easy. I am going to the game, so I am massively excited. I'd be massively excited anyway, even if I wasn't. Liverpool are have been created. They are a bastion of invincibility. They are there to win trophies. It's what we do. We love seeing that Champions World getting updated. We love seeing them lift the cups. We love hearing Dua Lipa one kiss. I hope the stadium and we are bouncing to that tomorrow, just to be crystal clear. Love all that. Massively love it beyond belief. So excitement wise, it's interesting though. I have heard a few say, or say, you know, a few different mates or things on Twitter, probably like you've seen, ah, it's just the carabao, it's not important, all those things. For me, the big excitement is it's a trophy and it's Wembley. Those days shouldn't just be almost dismissed or like taken nonchalantly by any means. They are special days, these. They really are. It's almost one of the, it could be. I mean, you've got to be honest, recognise this. We hope not, but it's potential to be the last cup final of Jurgen Klopp's reign. Oh, that killed the excitement and the tone, didn't it, straight away? But that's what you've got to think about. So the excitement, the whole thing that goes into a, a cup final. And yes, I get it. I do understand there will be people saying, bigger fish to fry, other things I'm worried about, more worried about injuries and stuff that will come to. I totally... understand that. However, it is a cup final and it is right for people, fans, to be excited. So if you are, like I am, massively, I'm no two ways about it, enjoy yourselves, regardless of what anyone says. You should be excited. Excitement is always tempered with reality, though, in the real world, isn't it? And that's, that's kind of what we're dealing with a little bit at the moment. So the next big decision, which is not really ours, Maybe I would deal with it, I suppose you could say, but the three injured players. Now, I know we've got a lot more than three injured players, but as per Pep Linder's press conference yesterday, there's three that have a chance, a possibility, as he said, day by day, and we'll have to see, of making the final. And those three are Mo Salah, Darwin Nunes, and Dominic Zaboslai. Now, Jürgen's got to make a big decision. Are they fit enough naturally? to have any part. we There's a lot we don't know. Needs to be crystal clear. There's no ITK thing or, you know, we could only go off what we're seeing, just to be clear. Now, at the moment, a couple of them players are teasing us, I think. Look at Mo Salah, even this morning, posting a photo on his Instagram. Darwin are active on Twitter still, you know, doing the way. People will read into that. The club are teasing us a little bit, aren't they, as well? Let's just be clear on that. Because you saw the very small bit of the morning, sorry, how to put it, morning scenes, I suppose, before 
they started any training. And there's Darwin. And there's Mo Salah. So I see people even stating on Twitter, oh, that's it, they're in training. No, that does not mean anything at all. Unless you get photos or see them kicking the ball on the grass, that does not mean for one second they're in training. But they're teasing us. The club are teasing us. The players are teasing us. And listen, if they're not going to play, I get it. I completely 100% get it, just to be crystal clear. You don't want to give anything away to Chelsea. You want to understand why they're doing it, even if they're not going to make it. Now, Seller especially, we know he's a machine. You know he will be doing everything. He'll be pushing Jurgen Klopp to say, get me, even if it's just on the bench and squad. The big decision Jurgen Klopp's really got to make is the risk factor. Now, we know Jurgen's always said before we want he wants them to have at least two full sessions. I don't know this for definite. I'm not I'm pretending I don't have any inside knowledge for one second. Please be crystal clear on that. But from all the suggestions and everything we're seeing, there's no evidence that Darwin Nunes, Mo Salah, Dominic Zabozlai are going to meet that criteria. So if they are going to play a part of any sort, and you think now, probably on the bench at best, that would be my take. Everyone could see it differently, but that would be my, my take at best. Then Jürgen's almost, he'd have to go against his rule, it would seem a little bit of those couple of sessions before. So I would suggest the decision, as in the big decision, the chances get lower, the probability, if you want to call that percentage, lower and lower all the time, I'm afraid. My big decision, I've already made this in my head, I fully expect us to be without them. So I'm already thinking like, how are we going to do it? You know, we'll, we'll, what we're like. But I've fully prepared to go without them, as in I expect that to happen. That's the big decision I've made. There's a buzz live on one, the same Twitter alike, wasn't he? If anyone missed that last night, Apparently something to do with Twitch. I don't really understand all that world. I'm not going to pretend. But his best mate said they were broadcasting live from Malta. Who would have thought Malta would come into mix with Liverpool players last night? But if you haven't seen it on Twitter, his mate was, I think it's Twitch, I think it's called. Apparently a gamer thing. But yeah, it was broadcasting from Malta. But apparently it wasn't broadcasting from Malta. It's something they do for, for various reasons. I'm not fully sure of why, but I can well understand. So that, was a part of it, but we didn't see Zabozlai in any of the behind the scenes pictures, you know, even in the building. So that's something to consider. So yeah, my big decision is I just expect us to be without them. The easiest way, prepare for the worst, hope for the best, but fully prepared for Liverpool to go without them. And to be honest, when I say prepare for the worst, just to be clear, we were nervous on Wednesday against Luton, but look how those boys did. They were absolutely sensational second half. First half, especially the front three, wasteful, weren't they? Luis Diaz, you're thinking you could have had a hat trick pretty much in the first half. Just decision-making, not the best. But, hey-ho, second half, they blew Luton away, didn't they? Absolutely blew Luton away. All of those front three, on the score sheet. Yeah, all contributing, performances all around, kids having an impact. So that's another reason I go in hopeful. I know some people have made that big decision that they've almost gone, ah, anything's a bone. No, it's still a cup final. Just still be hopeful. It's right to be expecting it. It's Liverpool Football Club, even with all the injuries. Yes, there's mitigation now there, no doubts about it, but should still go in, as I said at the start, fully excited. The next big decision I suppose Jurgen Klopp's got to make is the lineup. Maybe this picks itself. David Lynch suggested that and doesn't think it is too difficult. Now, Kelleher, Bradley, Robbo, BVD, Canate. That back five, I think is the easiest to pick without doubt for me. Now, I know people are going to be saying, what about Gomez? I get that. Simicast is not... And those are two senior options for me. They will come on, I suspect, at some point. But yeah, easy. Maybe even easier. The midfield and forward line. Endo Mac, Grav in the midfield. Forward line. It's the same again, isn't it? Pretty much that 
Elliot on the right, Diaz on the left, Gakpo in the middle. Which actually, if those three can, and I know I'm wishing away, I'm almost going against myself, but if those three can somehow make the bench, you then start thinking, great, brill. You know, we've got proper options. However, even if they don't, this lineup, there are options from the bench. Let's just be crystal clear. We said about the two senior fullbacks there, Gomez, Simicast, they could come on. You also then start thinking about the kids that, Bobby Clark, more than capable of making an impact. McConnell, Jaden Dans. These kids have ability. Yeah, let's not just write them off or say, oh, you know, all disastrous. I, I would be almost excited to see some of those. We've seen great cameos from them recently. So I think the lineup does pick itself if those three aren't back. I think the subs probably pick themselves if those three aren't back. Could well be something different. You, you never know, but that is how I see it. That's my big decision in terms of lineups and subs. Penalty takers, people. This is absolutely fascinating because Salah, Zaboslai and Nunes, you could argue they would be in the five or the first five penalty takers. You can argue that without doubt. They'd be in our first five penalty takers. So if it goes to penalty, and this is a big decision to make because it might not come, come to fruition as we know, but it's an interesting one to think about, isn't it? Who would be your penalty takers? And the other difference is now, because the squad could well be very, very thin, you might even have to start thinking about who's six or seven, i.e. with certain people. So let me tell you how I see it in this way. Penalty takers. And this is, please, this isn't like one to five or one to seven. This, this is not a, a definitive thing. I just want to be crystal clear on that in order. But VVD will step up. We stepped up for Holland. We know. We stepped up in the Carabao before where he gave Kappa the look, as we all know, a couple of years ago. He's going to be on your list. It actually gets quite hard from here, to be honest. And I mean that because of who could be on the pitch. Because people are going to start saying, oh, Harvey Elliott's one. Harvey Elliott, just to be clear, has spent most of this season being a sub-impact. When he started, usually runs himself into the ground and then comes off. It is For me, I'm thinking it's near impossible to see Harvey Elliott playing 120 minutes and then play, taking a penalty. And the reason I'm saying 120 minutes with Salah, I can't see anyone else. I've named him a starting lineup, so I have to think like that. So that's one. DVD. Second one. This is tough. Cody Gakpo. Penalty taker for PSV, but occasionally for Holland as well before. Again, you're debating still on the pitch, but he's my number two. Number three, now they're probably going to want to take him off if it does go to extra time, and I know this, and I get it as I'm saying it, but Alexis McAllister. Took him for Brighton, a specialist penalty taker. He's already been running into the red zone, I know if he's playing, because he's going to start in the end, I get that, but specialist penalty taker. Number four, and it honestly wouldn't surprise me again if he's off. I know I just keep saying this, but Robbo. And people are going to be thinking, lefty, are you mental? Took one in the Carabao, didn't he? Part of the leadership group will step up, I'd fancy as well. So he'll be in my seven. You know, it gets even harder. It sounds terrible because I wouldn't have Luis Diaz either. He might be terrified. We know for all the talents Luis Diaz has and people questions him, yeah, he, he wouldn't be in mind. So who is number five? I even feel strange saying this, but Endo, captain of Japan, a leader, gum shield, balls out he'd have as he took it, I'd back him. Endo would be my five. So if you think, BBD, Gatpo, Endo, 
Alexis McAllister, Robbo, not in that order, but they're my five. And you can argue that all day. I could, well, I'd take it on the chin if you said they won't be on the pitch, all of them, but well believable. But it's really hard to come up with options. And that's why I'm saying people will be Harvey Elliott, Diaz, they both usually run themselves into the ground. 120 minutes as well. It For me, it's nigh on impossible to see. And then you even start thinking you're going to ask a kid. Connor Bradley wouldn't surprise me, by the way. I had Connor Bradley at six. So if he stepped in there, if he's on, if he's on the pitch again, that's an option. It's difficult, isn't it? It's really difficult. Simicass, imagine if he's on the pitch. He could well be in it, but then again, you'd probably lose Robbo, wouldn't you, you'd think? So it's just really hard. But that, with zero confidence, is who I am going with for my penalties in that regard. And there we are. Other stuff. Let's get into other big decisions to make. Let's talk off the field a little bit. Now, off the field, there's quite a bit of sport. It's, it's going to go on for a while, this. This is part of my big decision, the sporting director, the manager stuff. So you've seen quite a bit this week on the manager side. I think that's the big one to focus on. That This phrase keeps coming up, doesn't it? Javi Alonso is the front runner. As though it's like a horse race on the old Channel 4 where there's coming up on the inside of Farmer's Field, followed by Mr. Boy. The final. There's, it's nothing like that, OK? You'll also see things like, you know, when it was interesting, there was a, I'd, I'd actually implore people to read this. There's one on the BBC where they said on a data-based approach, this is the order, and they ranked the managers. And Amarim came out top. I think Alonso was actually fourth or fifth, if I'm right. And I, I can't remember exactly all the details, but the key thing I would say is it's a data-led approach. Quite interesting by the BBC. Bit of a shout out to that one. I'd have a good read of that in sort of the rationale, the context. But obviously the Amarim lovers are big fans of that for obvious reasons. So there's that element as well. And people will look at that report or have seen that report will go, well, it's supposed to be data-led. We do keep hearing that from the journalists, don't we? That Spearman's involved. They present all that. So you wonder, okay, is that what they came? You don't know. You don't know. But that's that element. Miguel Delaney goes to, to combine the two in his article this week in The Independent that Amarin is the alternative to Alonso. It's all the A's here, isn't it? Yeah, so, so that was his story. General thing. And I, I've seen people say it this way, the big decisions. I kind of, my big decision is just to shut it off a little bit because I'll see Alonso and I, listen, I watched it just to see him play because he's potential. For Leverkusen, they won 2-1 the other night. They're 11 points clear, aren't they? But for the general, everything you see it, my big decision, shut it off a bit, take it with a pinch of salt because we don't fully know. It's quite clear there's a lot of speculation involved. And I know people say, oh, they're all spoofers, spoofers. That word I keep seeing come out. It's been a favourite, doesn't it, at the moment? And I get that if, you want, if that's your approach. But journalists are going to be looking for stories, aren't they, and trying to get information. How much belief you want to attach to it? That is completely up to you. That is the big decision. But for me, the manager thing, it's all a little bit unknown. Isn't it? I'm, not taking, I'm not putting really any stock in these reports that I'm reading. Until something comes out their mouth from their agent or them that rules them out or says something, it is what it is. The sporting director one as well. I mean, the, the, there's a bit of intrigue on this for me because... Quite a few journals and people have said, if you look at the reports, you want your sporting director in place or now, pretty much, because you're starting to think targets for the summer, what you want to do, make it, you know, all those types of things. That should already really be in place. Now, there's different people writing different things, but if you think of who's reliable, David Ornstein, actually in his Q&A this week, and it was only a couple of days ago, and then I'm actually quoting, I'm reading it here, said, I hear Liverpool, FSG would ideally like the sporting director situation decided by the end of March. So about a month or so. That's what David Ornstein said. So what's the big decision on this? To me, that does feel a little bit risky and a little bit late, if anything, especially if you're wanting to move for, for summer targets. It kind of just indicates a rush, but I get it at the same time. 
they'll probably, as, and he said this, which you fully suspect I agree with, there's movements taking place behind the scenes. Simon Hughes, an article, didn't he, as well, where he mentioned Ricky Massara, the former AC Milan, I'm, I'm probably pronouncing this wrong, but Florent Gisofli, you know, other operators that they like, so from France that way as well. So Lille, I think it is. So even Fallows and Hunter mentioned again, although they were mentioned last time round before Schmatke, but whether that's the nature of the agreement. Also, there's talk about, you know, whether they go back for Edwards, we know or we've had those reports, I should say. They've already tried. It all just feels a bit uncertain. But then again, it's what you're reporting. You never fully know the truth. I get that. However, here's the big decision for me. March, if you come in towards the end of March, and they, isn't, they aren't appointed, they aren't in place, I think I would be a little bit concerned, especially on the basis of, I know the focus people are going to be shouting, it's you know this season, and I, and I get that for on the pitch, but you've got to start future-proofing a bit without Jürgen. You do not want to leave it all to the last minute and then be chasing your tail big time. Yeah, March just seems really late because... Some players will already have made their decisions or agent, you know, and, and we're coming in when deals have already been struck. It doesn't mean it's exactly going to be like Caicedo, don't get me wrong, but, you know, it just feels late in the day. That's my big decision. So I hope, I really hope that everything is resolved well before then in that regard. But we'll have to see. Hopefully we won't have to wait too long because we are right near the end of Feb. And more importantly, people, we are on the verge of a Carabao Cup final. You may not be, you may be a little bit, you may be a lot. I am hugely excited. Liverpool in a final, Jurgen Klopp back at Wembley, a chance to add to that trophy wall. That, for me, kind of trumps everything in the short term, the immediate. I get injuries, I get lineups, I get all the other things that are going on. People are already looking ahead, aren't they, to, to certain games? Which leads me to my final big decision to make. That FA Cup game, actually. Southampton thinking, why the frick are you talking about that? And jumping ahead to that. That is a really important game all of a sudden. If we win that game, Everton away has to be rescheduled. That is the knock-on effect. If we win that FA Cup game against Southampton, Everton away has to be rescheduled. That could benefit us massively. And the reason for that is it's a better chance to have players back, isn't it? More recovered from injury. That knocking on. Have a look on the calendar where the derby is if you're unsure. It could be really beneficial. <laughs> Just the, the line there. But the final big decision as well, international break. Dear Christ, I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but... After that Carabao, we almost wish it was then, didn't we? Or don't we? Let's be honest, we maybe need it. It may just suit us this time. And I know people are going to be screaming, thinking, no, come on, like we get players injured and all that type of thing. I get that. I really do. But it wouldn't be the worst thing to have an international break soon. But I'll help you out. Everton, Liverpool, 17th of March. So if that gets rescheduled, it could really, really suit us in that regard. It would actually mean we've not got too many league games really before the international break. Just something, ladies and gents, to think about in that regard. But wherever you are, whatever you're doing tomorrow for the Carabao Cup, I do hope you enjoy your day. I know we'll enjoy it if Liverpool win, naturally as well, but fingers crossed we all get our stories, our visions or whatever happens and Liverpool are lifting that trophy. But ladies and gents, that was another Big Decisions for Anfield Index. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash Discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, 
we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds, and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. Sports Social Podcast Network.